everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. My name's Jack. Today we are reviewing a very awesome, very big set from Creator. This is the Creator Carousel, and uh, it was actually sent over to us by Lego for review. So thanks a lot, guys, for uh, sending this awesome creation over to us. It's been in the studio now for a couple of days, and uh, I've got a lot of stuff to say about it. And um, anyways, let's just get right into the review. All right, I'll just let this beautiful model rotate around while I give you some of the logistical information about it. The set sells for $200 or 160 pounds. The uh, part count is 2,670, and that makes for a very good part to price ratio, especially considering this thing comes with seven minifigs. The entire carousel rests on a bunch of different plate and wedge pieces. It's a really strong build, uh, 40 studs by 40 studs with a little bit of extra allowing uh, sort of that place for the crank or if you wanted to attach a motor, which makes it almost the exact same same dimensions as the original Grand Carousel that came out back in 2008. But this isn't going to be any kind of comparison video between these two sets. I'm entirely going to be focusing on just the details and the functionality of this one. So anyways, let's start looking at some of the closer, more ornate details that I think really give this set a bit more personality. First of all, we have some wonderful colors included. Blue and yellow always work pretty well to contrast each other. And we have a few different shades and tones to kind of uh, play around with. There's a lot of light blue and some uh, darker blue highlights. Those colors especially work well with the trim that goes around the top. I'll show that stuff off in a little bit closer detail later. But then the yellow contrasting colors come in a bunch of different tones. We have the very, very vibrant roof, lots of gold. And then I think the best parts are the trans yellow studs that are both on the outer trim and around the steps. And that tan actually kind of works pretty well as sort of a subtle tone with uh, some yellow in there. Now taking a closer look at some of these details, I think my personal favorite part about just about the whole set, I would say, is the inclusion of these reflective gold stickers. I believe this is the first time we've had any sort of reflective yellow or reflective gold uh, as a sticker. And it mostly comes in the form of these circular and rectangular pieces that are on the center column of the carousel. Not only does the color contrast well with the light blue, like I mentioned before, but I just love seeing the reflections of all the different animals bouncing back at the characters. This feels very reminiscent of what you would experience at a carnival. I feel like there's always mirror fun houses and the inclusion of all this reflective detailing does feel very well placed but man it just makes a wonderful visual effect and in my opinion this is really like the eye candy of this set now some might disagree with me just because the uh, outer trim also looks really really good so maybe this is the more attractive detail for you guys we have an inclusion of some of those reflective stickers like at the bottom but uh, not quite as much and as the pattern goes by you can see these prints for the books that have also some gold reflective printing trim this contrast well with the white background and those great uh, tail pieces or tusk pieces that make up those blue archways. And that reflective circular sticker is encased with some uh, wheel well pieces that are facing each other. Gotta say though, my favorite bit about this whole area is that the designer managed to find another use for the uh, Angry Birds King Pig crown. It's the first time this accessory has been reused outside of the Angry Birds line and I think they found a wonderful use for it here on the carousel. Now, according to the designer, this is a fairy tale themed carousel, not like uh, the traditional horses that you usually get. So we have a fun variety of animals. I'll just go through them one by one. I think the builds for them are all pretty fun. First here is the sophisticated swan. It has a little bit of posability with the ratcheted joint for the neck and the wings can kind of move around a little bit on some joints. And this is the only animal that doesn't actually bob up and down when it spins. Next up is the tiger. You can see the black and orange stripes that go all along the body. I think my favorite aspect of the build are the uh, little clip pieces used for the ears and I also like that sloping uh, piece for the jaw. The paws have some of those uh, corner rounded tile pieces that I think are new for the color orange and ultimately it's a pretty fun little brick built animal. So the next guy in line is the frog. He's the jumping frog. I think he's the most satisfying to look at as it moves around because he's actually the only guy that moves as the animals dip up and down. The legs are incredibly loose. They just kind of rest there with some Technic pieces and that allows allows for him to look like he is indeed hopping up and down. Really fun function. And then the next animal in line is the largest of them all. We have the elephant. This is about minifig scale, I think, for what a regular elephant would be in a regular brick built life. And this one feels a little bit more life size or realistic compared to the other guys. I feel like if you took him out of the carousel, he could just look like a regular old brick built elephant that would work very well as just a real life animal. The back of the elephant feels a little bit open with the underside 
sides of the studs showing, but I think the build really makes up for that because the head is awesome, the ears are a little bit poseable, and you might have noticed by now, but all of the animals have the exact same eye printed piece on either side. And uh, here is the very last of the animals. This is our fabulous or flamboyant uh, flamingo. A pretty unique design here. He actually just bobs up and down with the leg just sinking in and out of the platform. And just like so many birds, the flamingo is just simply standing on the one leg while the other one is sort of bent and perched upwards. I think the build for the head here works especially well. It is just so simple, but really does look uh, like a distinctive uh, flamingo face. Now, as you watch the animals go by, you can see that the minifigs sit on there. Most of them, actually, I don't think any of them really have uh, studs to sit on. They all have to be holding on to the uh, rail in order for them to stay there. And this really is sort of the bread and butter, I think, of this set, being able to have a bunch of minifigs sitting on the animals. The whole thing's rotating around, and we have that awesome sort of gold reflection going on in the background. Now, I think I've already showed this thing with the automatic functions. Technically, there is no motor that's included in this scent. This is, I believe, uh, sort of the power box, the area where you can just crank the thing around. You need two hands to really kind of uh, do the function properly. And fortunately, the gears are set up on the inside to the point where you don't have to push particularly hard. There's a lot of moving pieces and there's a lot of places where this could get kind of jammed up a little bit. But when you plug this thing into the motor, I don't actually have any speed settings uh, on this thing. I have to hook this up to maybe a remote control so you can play around a little bit with the power. But the default speed setting has this thing running really, really fast. That's not a testament to the power of the motor so much as to how efficiently the gears are working on the inside. Now the last uh, major detail I want to focus on and really show off in a little bit better detail is the roof. The yellow cloth pieces that are used at the top are brand new. It's a brand new cut and the six of them overlay on top of each other sort of alternating in a very easy fashion. They just kind of fit around a couple of pin pieces and then these uh, flexi tubes, these white flexi tubes kind of bend down on each of the edges sort of right at the seam and that's what really pushes these parts down in place and creates that great sort of sloping effect towards the top. It looks like sort of a circus tent might look at the top, but really when you can see this thing from afar, that is a very distinctive feature for the set. And once again, I think that bright yellow really does contrast extremely well against the light blue and dark blue trim. Anyways, I think I've mentioned enough details about the main bit of the carousel. Let's check out the seven different minifigs that come in the set. According to the designer, two of the children belong to the two adult minifigs. And then we have a, another grandparent, the old man at the ticket booth, and another child. Let's just check them out one by one, check out some of the details that they came with. First up here is the grandmother. I believe that torso piece is a unique print to uh, just her so far. If not, it's not a particularly common torso print that we get from creator Cine Minifigs. Her two expressions are very similar to each other. Basically, I think just the eyebrows change up, but a pretty decent fig to get for sure. Here's one of the child Minifigs. She has one of the nicer torso pieces as well. I think I'm just going in the order of torso pieces that I like. This shows the hooded sweatshirt with a star in the front, and even the zipper has a little bit of reflective detailing. Next up here is the mother. Her torso piece is all lavender. I like the negative space being uh, purple for the hips. She has a very relaxed alternate expression, which I think is kind of nice. And then the dad minifigure has just a basic red plaid shirt with some maybe cargo pants or something like that. But his most important feature is definitely his alternate expression, a very important piece to have, especially in a set with any kind of ride. Here are the two other children, both very common torso pieces we've seen plenty of times before. And the same thing goes for the expressions on their faces and the accessories in their hands. I do like that there is at least one accessory for each minifigure. But wait a second, I almost forgot the last guy. This is the old man at the ticket booth. A common torso piece, but not such a common hairpiece. I think we're going to be seeing that one a little bit more often with the uh, widow's peak with the dark gray color. And I also like that print for his face. Anyways, these are all the minifigs. I like them a lot. And I also think that print for his face is pretty darn decent. The man that runs the ticket booth actually has a booth build to the set. It's the only other alternate build away from the carousel. And as you can see, there isn't really a whole lot of detailing that goes along with it. There's a print for a register on the inside. They kept the same sort of color combination, and there's basically just enough space for a single minifig to stand in the back. And all right, I guess we are now looking at the carousel set in its entirety, and I believe this is yet another great example of what we can expect from LEGO as a company. These large creator sets are always doing something fun and imaginative, but really this isn't just a nice looking set, it's a wonderfully designed machine build on the inside. And in my own personal opinion, I think this is one of the more aesthetically pleasing structures to come from LEGO. 
Now with this creator carousel set, there's one more thing that I think uh, a lot of builders might have some fun with, and that is creating your own special animal seat. The function of getting an animal in and out of the carousel is so easy that you're basically only limited by how big you can actually make the animal, and this bear that we're looking at right now is pretty much as big as you can make something that will actually fit inside the carousel. I know this is a fairy tale theme for the carousel, so maybe you could superimpose that maybe this has something to do with the Jungle Book, but really the design is based on the California grizzly bear. I chose this because, well, I am from California, the studio is in San Diego, and I recently built a Lego set that had a sort of larger bear build to it, and I think I was just itching to make one of these guys. Honestly, it's just a fun cartoon build. I think the only thing that could possibly lead you to think maybe it's a grizzly is the uh, shoulders are a little bit bigger towards the top there, and it was kind of limited in parts, and I wanted to make them a little bit more expressive, but the pieces I had really just lended him to looking like a very sad bear. Not totally my intention, but anyways, he's really big. This is him with a banana for scale. But anyways, let's actually just get this guy in the carousel. The function is really easy to just knock him right in. And as you can see, he fits, but I did make him big. He is considerably larger than everything else. He's bigger than the elephant that I did replace. And now this set just feels a little bit more special to me. You know, it's got a personal little touch. And I gotta say, if I ever come back to this, I'm probably gonna build a lion because then I can have lions, tigers, and bears oh my all right that is it for this episode everybody thanks a lot for watching remember if you enjoy our content you can always like or subscribe and i think the next step for this uh, creator carousel set is uh, to put it into our lego city next to the ferris wheel all right so anyways thanks a lot for watching we'll see you next time at brick ball